Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spurs Up Show, the best Gamecocks podcast on the internet. Today is Tuesday, December the 22nd, 2020. On today's show, former Gamecocks football player Alex McGrath joins me once again as we talk about Shane Beamer's initial recruiting class in South Carolina, the ongoing coaching search, what he thinks of the short list of candidates. Also, South Carolina taking on UAB this Saturday in the Gasparilla Bowl. I'll get his thoughts on the game, the Gamecocks accepting the bowl invite, what he wants to see, some of his favorite stories from going to bowl games at South Carolina also, much, much more more on a Pack Tuesday show, and it's all brought to you by our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. Guys, Upstate Movers Group, superior moving service. They bring care and attention other companies can't offer because they're just too busy maintaining trucks and profiting off of them instead of focusing on service. Guys, service is what separates Upstate Movers Group from the competition. Also, they're not a trucking company. They are a moving services company, and they're also employee-owned co-op, guys. Their movers are paid twice the industry average, and everyone on the crew is just invested in the success of the project as you are. They have dedicated professional crew members, and they also offer black glove service, guys. They offer end-to-end packing services, custom crating and packaging for special items, and cleaning services as well. They are founded by Greenville Natives and University of South Carolina alumni, so a Gamecock-owned small business. They also offer 20 years of project management moving experience, and they can offer logistics and solutions that traditional moving companies, guys, simply do not have the skills for. Whether you're in the upstate or across the state of South Carolina, if you have any moving needs this holiday season, be sure to check out my friends over over at Upstate Movers Group. Guys, you can find them on social media at Upstate Movers Group. And of course, again, for all of your moving needs, we know when you move, it can be a hassle. It can be stressful. You can lose things, break things, or you simply just don't want to do it, right? Let the guys over at Upstate Movers Group lend you a helping hand. Again, you can find them on social media and of course their website. If you have any questions and you want to learn any more information, check them out on their website, upstatemoversgroup.com. That is upstatemoversgroup.com. The show is also brought to you by our friends over at MyBookie. Guys, with the Christmas holiday right around the corner, MyBookie's been in a giving mood. A $250 risk-free bet on Thanksgiving, boosted odds and free bets every hour of Black Friday, and they continue to give away more freebies for Cyber Monday. Guys, for a sports book that's supposed to be in the business of making money, they were giving away. That's just one of the reasons why I've been rolling with MyBookie this season. Guys, the fact is this. If you're going to put some action on the games, whether you're betting NFL, NCAA, college football, college hoops, Whatever your preference, you want to do it with a reputable brand like my bookie. Guys, you can make your deposit using the promo code Gamecocks. That's promo code Gamecocks, and they'll match you halfway to give you a head start on building your bankroll. Guys, put in $200, get an extra $100 to play with. It's that simple. It's that easy. Joining and depositing. A very simple process, and it's quick, but more importantly, when it's time to get paid, that's quick too, guys. Treat yourself with some extra cash in your pocket this holiday season by investing in your intuition, guys. It's not just winter season, it's winning season. So bet, win, and get paid with my bookie. Let's get it. Did you know you could shop around for prescription prices? With GoodRx, you can find free coupons at over 70,000 pharmacies and save up to 80%. It's that easy. But don't just take my word for it. Dr. Adam says, I've been telling all my patients about GoodRx. Jacqueline says, my medication was $65 without insurance, but I paid $25. Aubriana says, you don't have to pay full price to live your best life. Couldn't have said it better myself. GoodRx is 100% free. Download the GoodRx app today and start saving. GoodRx is not insurance. All right, joining us in the Spurs Up show as he did each and every single Tuesday this football season. Obviously, with everything going on, the schedule's been kind of, uh, you know, been thrown into a jumble here. We're on Christmas week, but we're talking to former Gamecocks football player Alex McGrath once again. He joined us, obviously, all season long. And, Alex, I just missed you so much. I missed talking to you. I had to get you back on. Obviously, <laughs> hey, it's game week one last time in 2020. I figured what better way to spend a Tuesday than talking with you, sir. First things first. How have you been? I know it's only been a couple of weeks, obviously, since we last chatted, but a lot has happened. A lot is still happening, and we sit here one more time, like I said, on game week, and we were joking off air that it's kind of a, a strange dynamic to sit here on a Tuesday when your team is 2-8, and eight, but it's playing in a bowl game. But hey, 2020 is weird as it is, but first things first, man, how have you been? It's great to chat with you once again. 
Yeah, been good, man. Been good. Just gearing up for Christmas, getting everything in order, making sure, you know, all the presents have been picked up and gotten here on time and trying to figure out the most efficient way for me to put together a couple of power wheels in my garage on yeah, Christmas Eve. I was going to ask you, engineering obviously, feet unto itself. Yeah, I was going to say it's Christmas week. Have you gotten all your Christmas shopping done for the kiddos? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Mercifully, you, yes. <laughs> have you gotten yourself anything? Uh, is there any any gift for uh, Mr. McGrath that you, you, you've kind of spoiled yourself or splurged on? Maybe some golf stuff, no. golf clubs? or No? I'll, I'll tell you a little dirty secret about myself. Is uh, I, I've had the exact same golf clubs since uh, the Bush administration. <laughs> and I keep people keep telling me to get new ones. But Senior I like or junior? Still... Senior or junior? Junior. 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 Okay. junior. Okay. junior. Okay. Sorry, yes. Uh, George okay. the second. Yes. <laughs> um, and so, like, I've had those since then. I probably need to get new ones. But I've got new wedges and a new driver. They're fine. Like, mm-hmm. I don't – they still work. So, no. I mean, the best Christmas present I could give to myself would just be to, like, somehow get – 18 in over the holiday you know if we get a bluebird day in here somewhere yeah for sure maybe the Gamecocks can give you a a late Christmas gift as well with a win on Saturday and obviously we're going to spend some time talking about that again Gamecocks accepting the invite Sunday night Gasparilla Bowl against UAB and again we were joking a little bit off air that it's it's such a weird dynamic being two and eight going to a bowl game being an underdog to a team like UAB but that is the situation South Carolina's in. Before we get into that game, Alex, I want to backtrack a little bit because, again, it has been a couple of weeks since we last spoke. And last week, obviously, the early signing period gets going underway. And we all know the reality right now with South Carolina's recruiting class and the, the situation they're in. I think you sit like 100th in the country in recruiting. You only have eight signees. And we, we all kind of watch from afar the job that Shane Beamer is doing. He's now officially done with his duties at Oklahoma. He's full-time in Columbia watching the team go through bowl practice, which he's not going to be coaching the bowl game, which if fans don't understand, that is standard practice for a new head coach when he comes in. They normally don't take over and coach that bowl game. But let's first talk about the recruiting class because I'm not sure how closely you follow all that stuff or follow recruiting or whatever, but I know a lot of fans have been freaking out a little bit because of the – I mean, you're you're literally ranked dead last in the SEC. You're ranked like 100th. But, again, it's one of those things where you don't even have a full coaching staff right now. So what can you really expect? And signing day goes all the way to fe- through to February. I told fans I'm expecting Shane Beamer to hammer two areas really hard, junior college players – and transfers because the transfer portal, I don't know if you've seen Alex, it's literally going to be like free agency this all season in college football. Players can mm-hmm. play immediately next year. We've already started to hear players from Oklahoma and in the transfer portal, portal uh, quarterback Tanner Mordecai is a guy that a lot of people are thinking maybe he's going to follow Shane Beamer to Columbia. I think they just had like another four star uh, running back from 2018 in the transfer portal. So I think you're going to see Shane Beamer and company because they've got about 17 spots to fill. I think you're going to really see them attack that hard. But just any thoughts from you on the recruiting side of things? Again, I, I know you probably don't follow that too, too closely, but I'm sure you're one of these people. You're, you're keeping it pretty level-headed, not freaking out with it being so early in, in that signing class process, if you will. Yeah, I mean, I tangentially follow it. Like, I'll, I'll, like, I'll click on it and see kind of where we are, but I'm not, like, reading blog posts about, like, the temperature of a 16-year-old on which way he's going to break <laughs> on a – yeah (laughs) recruiting visit um you know from the from the class perspective i mean it's early signing period so we've got another two months yeah before this thing is signed sealed and delivered and you're talking about when you look at juco's when you look at transfer portal you know a lot of those guys are have bowl games coming up that they're trying to get ready for and they're going to make a big decision so you know at the end of the day i would say let's be patient and wait this out and see kind of where we end up in february i know there's i know there's another big piece of this too and i don't know how exactly this shakes out but with the way that the covid protocol worked this year where this doesn't count mm-hmm. you know you've got to have a really good idea of what your seniors are going to do and whether they're going to come back because the way i understand it is if they decide to come back mm-hmm that counts against your scholarships that you can offer. Yeah. And Beamer, and that... Beamer actually, yeah, well, I, I believe so. And Beamer actually said that as far as he knows, he is not, there's nobody else that's expressed. They are going to leave senior wise. So okay. there should be a fair amount of seniors coming back for South Carolina. Okay. Well, I mean, and so you got to take that into account too. So it's like, you know, if you only have eight spots, and two, the way those rivals rankings work, you know, if you only have eight players, but they're quality players, mm-hmm. Yeah, eight you know, three-star players. 20, eight three-star players, yeah. Yeah, and if you got 25 somewhere else, they're just inherently going to have a higher right. rating than you are based on those numbers. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. I'm not, I'm not worried about it in the least bit. 
Yeah, I, I think, like I said, it's going to be really interesting to see because, again, you're starting to see guys from Oklahoma into the portal. And, you know, we know Shane Beamer has contacts everywhere. And, I mean, he's obviously recruited all over the southeast and obviously in that region where Oklahoma is now. And I'll just be very curious to see how many – I don't think it's a question of if, if you get a – it's like how many guys – can he and does he pull from the transfer portal? Because, again, if you're Shane Beamer, you know, you obviously – I mean, there's not pressure, I would say, like a ton of pressure to win in year one, but you want to get this thing off on the right foot. And, I mean, heck, if you can bring a couple of four- or five-star wide receivers from Oklahoma that aren't seeing a lot of playing time and get them on your roster, I think he's going to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I think he's going to try to bring in as many play- transaction. Yeah, right. No, for sure. And like I said, they're immediately eligible. So, um, you know, I would say to fans, do not be surprised if you see this Tanner Mordecai kid from Oklahoma. Hey – the more competition, the better. Iron sharpens iron. You, and you say to yourself, hey, we got Ryan Linsky, we have Luke Doty, we've got Gothier coming in. But as the many guys you can add, the better. And I, I tell people, people ask me all the time, who's the starting quarterback going to be, Chris? Who's the quarterback going to be? And I'm like, what if I would have told you at this time last year that our starting quarterback would have been a transfer from Colorado State? Would you have ever believed me? So you just never really know what's going to happen. Yes. It, yeah, yes, yeah. I would have. Well, with, with that staff that was in place, <laughs> based, you, yeah, based on the staff, yeah. just assume the wackiest uh, outcome possible. But no, I, I definitely think Shane Beamer and company will hit the transfer portal hard. I, I think the class will begin to take much more shape once we find out who the coordinators are and who this coaching staff is. And let's move to that, Alex, because that's really the thing that's on every Gamecock fan's mind. It's funny because I see fans uh, getting frustrated a little bit. Shane Beamer is obviously testing our patience a little bit um, because I think Coach Beamer probably knows who his guys are, but no no announcements have been made. And, you know, you understand it from the coaching side of things, respecting these guys, letting them coach out their seasons, finish with their teams. Now that the regular season is in the books and we are literally moving into bowl season as we sit here and talk, there is a bowl game being being played in Myrtle Beach in about 10 minutes from right now when we are speaking. Um, I would expect to hear probably this week is when you're going to find out OC, DC, and I talked about on the show Monday things that I'm hearing as far as defensively. I think the leaders right now, Jay Bateman's what my guys told me, but I think it's either going to be Jay Bateman from North Carolina or John Heacock from Iowa State, both of which I think and I know you agree would be really, really solid hires. And then offensively, the name that I've heard from the beginning has been Garrett Riley. I, I don't know if it's going to be Garrett Riley. Um, you know, there's been a lot of momentum for Mike Bobo to stay on as an offensive coach, not the OC, but just stay on staff as an offensive coach. I know a lot of fans have, feel some type of way about that, which I want to, which I want to get your thoughts on that in just a second. But your overall take, I guess, on how this has all unfolded. I'm, I'm sure, again, you being a football guy, you're not surprised that Shane Beamer, which he's done – a fantastic job keeping everything close to the vest. It's funny. People have been joking on social media just saying that uh, if you have any secrets you don't want to come out, just tell Shane Beamer because that guy can obviously keep a secret <laughs> pretty well. But uh, your thoughts just on the names that have been floating around. Because, again, you and I talked off air. The biggest thing I would say to, is this. I'm giving Shane Beamer the benefit of the doubt in this coordinator search. Like, there's, there are no names I've heard that I really balk at. The only thing I don't want to see is Mike Bobo being the main OC, which is not going to happen. Um, no, that's not. I, I, I really, truly do believe Shane Beamer said it when he got the job. He took less money for a reason. He said he's going to hire a premier coaching staff, and I fully believe he's going to do that. When I hear the, the short list of names for both offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, really the rest of his staff, I think that's kind of what Beamer is working towards and what he's going to do. 100%. And both of those names, at, I mean, the big, obviously the big name at OC is Garrett Riley, who I think would be a, a win for us. Yeah, and then on the defensive side, Yeah, and then on the defensive side of the ball, you know, Jay Bateman in North Carolina um, or Heacock at Iowa State should both be names that we are all excited about mm-hmm. because, like, what Matt Campbell has done at Iowa State in five years is Bill Snyder-esque from Kansas State, um, I would, who I should also point out would have been somebody we could have hired in 2015, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, and then Jay Bateman at North Carolina, you know, coaching under Matt Brown, you know, they've turned that program around mm. in two years. Yeah. From no, kind sure. of a, a dumpster fire to, you know, a top 25 program. So, no, both of those names are ones that we should be excited about and hopeful that we get. Yeah, I've actually got buddies I'm close with. One guy that's uh, close to Texas football and the other one, Tyler McComas, who I had a couple of weeks on a couple on, cup on a couple of weeks ago that, uh, you know, lives in Norman, covers the Sooners, stuff like that. And they've both expressed to me they think Heacock would be a great hire because he's a guy that's done different things in the Big 12. And they say it's annoying because teams don't play defense in the Big 12. But Iowa State has found a way to do that, and that's why they are such a pesky team. So I think Heacock, I mean, if you can have a solid defense in the Big 12, 
that's saying something. You know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. Bateman, too, especially with, you know, the recruiting ties and all that, him already being, you know, in the state of North Carolina and in the Southeast. And, I, again, I think a guy really well-respected. Like I said, I'm giving – Shane Beamer, the benefit of the doubt here. I mean, I, I've not heard a single name that I've bought that. And again, Beamer knows what needs to be done. He needs, he knows he needs to hire an elite staff from everything from the OC and the DC to his analysts, to his strength staff, to everything. And I think that he's doing that. I, I want to get your thoughts on the offensive side, because again, Alex, I, I know a lot of fans balk at the idea of Mike Bobo sticking around, right? There's a lot of fans that We'll never forgive Mike Bobo for the treatment of Ryan Holinsky. And again, that, that is a totally different conversation for a totally different show because I know you and I agree in the sense that I don't think there's, you know, for as critical as I was of Will Muschamp and I've been of Mike Bobo and these other coaches, a lot of these guys have been coaching football and around the game for longer than I've been alive. So I don't think they get in the meeting rooms. I don't think they sat down in the meeting rooms before this 2020 season and said, you know what, we should play the guy that gives us less of a chance to win than this guy. Like, I don't think they looked at that situation and said, oh, we just don't like this kid, so we're not going to play him. I, I just don't believe that, right? So I know a lot of fans feel that way because how things went down with Helensky and Colin Hill winning the starting job, whatever. Again, like I said, that is a conversation that could take up an entire other podcast. But I think when you look at the offense in 2020, and again, I don't want Mike Bowe to be the main OC. I don't think he's going to be the main OC. I don't even think he's going to call plays. But having him on the offensive staff, I think, could be – of great value because when you take a look at what he did for the South Carolina offense in 2020, especially the running game, there's no getting around how much better South Carolina was offensively in 2020. Just talk about your thoughts. I mean, would you prefer to see Bobo go? Would you mind if he came back? Like just your overall thoughts. And again, this is somebody again, that was literally at Georgia when you were at South Carolina, like he's been around sec football for a long, long time. Your overall thoughts on if Shane Beamer decides to keep Mike Bobo on his staff. So like philosophically, I don't, I think the system that Bobo wants to run is not one that you would have a tremendous amount of success with right. from a wins and losses standpoint in South Carolina. Now, there is no argument you could make whatsoever that he didn't make our offense better. Mm. Like Kevin Harris led the SEC in <laughs> rushing yards. Yeah. Like on like, a two and call 18. A spade, a spade. Yeah, yeah, correct. Call a spade a spade here. Like he, he, he found ways to get production out of an offense that we weren't getting before. So, you know, when you're, when he's running a team like Georgia, where you can run that eye power set, where you've got big tight ends on the field that you can feature in those games. I think that gives you, you know, a lot of different cards to play in those situations that we just don't have right now. So what we've got to do is figure, we got to find somebody like a Garrett Riley who can scheme up plays to get our receivers into space and let them make plays rather than just being like, you know, we've got this, you know, Muhammad Massaqua or, you know, all these other receivers that he had at Georgia where you can just throw the ball up down the field and they're just going to go get it. Um, and, you know, you've got Kevin Harris and a great running back room sitting back there. It's like, how do we scheme this up the best way possible? So I think like keeping somebody like Bobo on staff, is a, is a good thing for us because it's just more eyes that have the experience right at any different scenario you could possibly come up with offense to progress mm -hmm. so from that standpoint no i think it's a great idea to keep him on staff do i necessarily want him calling the plays no but i think it's a good thing to keep him around yeah and, and here's the thing I especially since out. we have to pay him anyway yeah exactly and here's the thing i want to point out too though shane beamer do I know Shane Beamer personally? No, I do not. But I can tell you Shane Beamer is not going to keep anyone on staff or hire anyone who he thinks is going to sabotage his program. Like, he's not no. – he's so he's not going to keep Mike Bobo around unless he feels like this guy will be an asset to our success moving forward. Bottom line. Like, so I, I just – you know, and again, I don't expect Mike Bobo to be the main host. I don't expect him to be the play caller. You know, let's say you hypothetically bring in a guy like Garrett Riley. It's going to be – his system, what he wants to do, and Mike Bobo is kind of – literally, he's going to be what Shane Beamer is doing at Oklahoma. Like, I would say exact, almost exactly what he's doing in Oklahoma, where he's just like an offensive assistant to what Lincoln Riley is doing. You know what I mean? It's not right. going to be – right. So, I don't know. I, I know fans, again, and I think there's many different reasons why they feel some type of way about Mike Bobo and, and, and how the season went, how things have broken down and whatever. That is what it is. But if you take your emotion out of it and you just look at it from an on-the-field perspective – I think it could serve to be a positive. Again, it'll be f interesting to find out because I think we will find out this week. Heck, when you guys are here in this show, it may have already come out, but I think we'll find out this week kind of what that staff looks like 
And it'll be interesting to see what Shane Beamer decides on um, in regards to his first staff at South Carolina. Let's move, obviously, to the bowl game, Alex. We're talking Mike Bobo. He is the one that will be coaching the bowl game this Saturday, Gamecocks, taking on the UAB Blazers in the Gasparilla Bowl in Tampa, Florida, noon kick on Saturday uh, on ABC. First things first, I I just want to ask you this. There have been mixed reactions to South Carolina accepting the bowl invite. Listen, 2020, we all know, has been a crazy year. Thank God it's almost over. It has been a wild year, though. And my biggest thing is this, because I I genuinely just don't, and I talked about this on the Monday show yesterday, I, I genuinely just don't understand the fans that see us accept an invite to a bowl game and are upset about it. They're calling it a participation trophy. They're saying we should have declined the invite. We shouldn't go play. A 2-8 and eight team shouldn't be there. It's 2020, guys. It is what it is. Nothing makes sense this year. I see this as nothing but a positive. Hey, first things first, selfishly from the fan perspective, we get to watch the Gamecocks suit it up one more time. Really, I should just end it there. That's all you, That's the only justification that I need. But guys like Luke Doty, even Kevin Harris, the youngsters on defense, your youngsters at wideout, we talked before, Alex, you can't simulate game day reps in practice. They get one more opportunity to go after it and compete. And you'd like to think, again, I know South Carolina right now is about a touchdown underdog, but you'd like to think as an SEC team, with, there's SEC talent on that roster. Like it or not, there is SEC talent on that roster. You'd like to think we can hold our own against UAB. Like you really do, as tough as this season has been. Um, I, I want to get, though, with that being said, your overall thoughts on South Carolina going to the Gasparilla Bowl. Again, like we joked off air, it's a weird dynamic because you're two and eight. And again, we talked about, you know, the last time South kind of played UAB, I think was 2011 and you beat the living hell out of them. And, and that's one of those games. It's one of those non-conference games. That, like I look at next year's schedule. It's a game. I look at like Eastern Illinois, like just, you should just check it off. I mean, it's, it's a win. It, it's a win. To, it's a stat builder. You know what I mean? It's, we're going to get the, we're going to get the backups in yeah. there and get our, get our walk-ons in like guys are going to play. We're going to have some fun. And then you look and you're a touchdown underdog to UAB. So it's a strange dynamic, but you, your overall thoughts on, South Carolina accepting the bowl invite and just kind of going into the bowl game, how you're feeling. Like I told you before we started, just a PSA to all the fans talking about participation trophies. If you guys would like to up your Gamecock Club donations so we don't need this bowl payout to get rid of Muschamp, you are welcome to do so. But until that happens, we need to play this game to get some money. Mm -hmm. One. Two. It is. It's just reps for the young kids. And it gets them those game reps that you can't get in practice. And that's in, that's super important going forward. So it's, yeah. you know, 60 reps that Luke, De- Luke Doty may not otherwise have. Yeah, I, and I think it's – young receivers. Yeah, I think it's like 1.2 million that they're getting from the Gasparilla Bowl. And I, I joked I mean, on – so I tagged – I joked on Twitter. I tagged the Gasparilla Bowl account and just said, when you write the check, can you just forward it to uh, – directly to Will Muschamp because that's where it's going. Hey, hey that's where it's going. Right. I mean, we – every hey, penny. That's, <laughs> that's the first quarter of next year right yeah, off the book. And I, and I had a buddy of mine that works in the building, you know, around the team that literally told me a few weeks ago, he's like, hey, man, I'm just going to tell you, if we if we get invited to a bowl, we're taking it because we need the money to pay for the buyout. I'm like, yes, we I do. respect it. I mean, I, I genuinely respect it. When we talk about the game on the field, though, again, interesting dynamic. You're two and eight. How many players, how many scholarship players will you even have available? You know, Mike Bobo saying uh, Sunday night they had 51 or 52. Who are you texting? My therapist. You text with your therapist? Text, video chat, call? Yep. That sounds too easy. How did you find her? I just went to betterhelp.com slash save. She's a licensed therapist and it's all online. I connect when it's convenient for me and don't waste time driving anywhere. Plus it's affordable. I wonder if I should try it. It's great to talk to someone in confidence. She's helped me sort out quite a few things. And right now you save 10% off the first month when you go through betterhelp.com slash save. Betterhelp.com slash save. Got it. We'll get back to your music shortly, but first, did you know that prescription prices are different at different pharmacies? You could literally drive across the street and get a different price. That's crazy. But with GoodRx, you can instantly compare prices at every pharmacy in your neighborhood and save up to 80%. You're probably thinking there's a catch, right? Nope. It's 100% free and can save you money whether you have insurance or not. In fact, it can often beat your copay. Download the GoodRx app today and start saving. GoodRx is not insurance guys uh, scholarship guys practicing and we all know shy smith ernest jones and sedarius hutcherson will all be out because they've declared for the draft and they've hired agents and you're ineligible once you do that so again there's gonna be a lot of young guys playing but 
win, lose, or draw, whatever it may be, we get to watch the boys one more time. Is there anything specifically that you think you'll be looking for? Because, again, like I said, it's a strange dynamic because you've got an entire coaching staff that basically probably is not going to be there. I mean, literally, Travoris Robinson and Kyle Krantz are coming back and coaching the bowl game, and they already know they don't have jobs there anymore. That, and that's, that's interesting. That has to be very interesting for them. And I, I will say, I give them credit. It speaks to their character, the type of people they are. They care about the kids enough yeah. to come back. But just are, is there anything specifically you're looking forward to watching on Saturday just outside of, hey, the Gamecocks are playing another football game in 2020? Before that, what happened to our other 33 scholarship players? That is a fantastic question. I, I think between COVID, opt-outs, injuries, that a lot of injuries. There's a lot of injuries, especially on the defensive side. So there's still a lot of injuries. And Mike Bobo has said he's not going to reveal depth chart or anything to do with the roster until game time Saturday. So who knows who's even available at this point? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy who knows so um just yeah just really looking for progress mm. i want to see you guys like luke Doty or, or you know some of our younger receivers just step up and make plays to look like you know okay you know obviously 2020 didn't go the way we wanted it to go but can we show some flashes can we show some progress going into the off season that we have something to look forward to in 21 and I, I spoke to this, Alex, a little bit ago as well. I think going back to kind of why I think this is so valuable, I think the invaluable piece that people aren't thinking about in this bowl game is that, you know, Shane Beamer obviously can go back and watch film and watch the 2020 season and evaluate his team. But would you not agree that I think this is an invaluable opportunity for Shane Beamer? He gets to see his team in a game, in person, yeah. live. He gets to evaluate his roster live in a game. Like, I, I think that's a huge thing for, for Coach Beamer and being able to see, hey, this is what I got. This is what I like, what I don't. This is what I need to go get. You know, because, again, you can watch them in practice and do all that and watch film, but to get to actually see these guys on the field in a big game, you know, a big game, bowl game, whatever, I think that's something that's invaluable for him to be able to go out there and evaluate and just figure out what he's got. 100%. He gets to see it live and in person on the sidelines with those guys and see their body language, see the reactions, kind of see what that camaraderie looks like. And that just gives you a head start going forward mm. for everybody. For sure. And we get money. Yeah, and we get money and we get paid. Don't forget <laughs> that. We do get paid. Alex, before I get you out of here, I do want to ask you, though, you went to a couple of bowl games while you were at South Carolina. Just talk about some of your your favorite bowl memories, whether it's on field, off field. I know there's a lot of things you guys do, obviously, the week of the game as far as um, you know, going different places, going to theme parks, going bowling, like having competitions with the other team off the field, like anything that sticks out from the bowl games that uh, you were a part of at South Carolina. Um, I would tell you the funniest thing that stood out uh, during uh, – so the last bowl we went to was the Outback Bowl where we played Iowa, mm. and we got a day to go to Bush Gardens. Um, or you just, we just got, you know, use of the park mm. for a couple hours and they gave us a bunch of like food coupons. Mm. And then it turned out we could use those food coupons for beer. <laughs> and so we just really kind of drank all day at Bush Gardens and we saw like the Iowa guys there, like in their track suits, like we had nothing on, we had like t-shirts right. and shorts on, um, and like we're just like wandering around drinking beer, and like at that point we probably should have realized what was coming to us on game day. <laughs> that well, we kind of all were on vacation, and they were there. <laughs> so that kind of you know what that Iowa result now makes a lot more sense. It should. It yeah. should. <laughs> it should. Oh my god! Because I remember Iowa smacked us pretty good that game. That they were physical, big physical Big Ten team. That was a. They had, who who'd they had they had that running back right Green I think it was yeah Sean Green Sean Green yeah he was he was a beast yeah he had a he had a good career with the Jets yeah if you can have such a thing yeah yeah seriously especially now um, no again that make that makes a lot of sense that Iowa game makes a lot more sense now I think I, I would assume led by number five himself in the beer consuming <laughs> no no Steven was on his best behavior that week okay. it was a, it was you know he's back in Tampa he's at home he, yeah. no, he was oh yeah that's that a week. good point that's a very good point uh, probably unlike how he will be this week which that's the only reason why I'm regretting not being able to go to Tampa is to uh hang out with with Garcia this week I'm sure he, him and him and Andrew Clifford and the boys down there are going to be having a blast watching watching South Carolina on Saturday and they're so 
For sure. Well, Alex, appreciate you taking the time, man. Again, like I said, on short notice, but hey, the last game week of 2020, it felt fitting to get you back on the airwaves, man. But obviously, uh, we'll see what happens Saturday. Hopefully, the Gamecocks can find a way to, to get the quote-unquote upset and, and get one more win in the 2020 season. But Alex, always a pleasure, man. Appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely, buddy. Always enjoyed talking football with you. Yep, absolutely. He's Alex McGrath. I'm Chris Phillips. We appreciate you guys tuning in. And we'll catch you next time on the episode of the Spurs Up Show.